because I did not want to have to carry out a 12 volt power supply, a bumper to start the nitro motor. I didn't want to have to carry fuel with me, extra glow plugs. But now, since I have a, about maybe 20 years of nitro experience, now I think I want to take my nitro tuning skills and apply them to a boat that could go on a lake and be out there some 200 feet and not have to worry about it shutting off. Why? Because the RC Guru has honed in his nitro tuning skills. So stay tuned as we get into this here. As you can see, uh, one of the first things I'm going to do is I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to give you guys a look at this here boat. This is a wonderful, wonderful boat. It came as a kit. It was all wood. It was uh, spruce wood, birch wood, and balsa wood, and some plywood. So it was very, very intricate. It took a lot of uh, days to manufacture, days to construct. As you can see inside of here, there's a lot of wood. There's wood all throughout here. And I had to use uh, two-part epoxy resins. And uh, we're going to uh, use a few of those in the final uh, completion of the kit. This is what I usually do is get this two-part epoxy like this. And, you know, you got a, a resin and then you have a hardener. This one right here is... Is capable of holding pressure of two tons and also to 2,500 psi strain. So this is some pretty good stuff right here, and it only takes 15 minutes for this stuff right here to cure. So we might be using this, we might not, we might get to it today. Hopefully we will. But I'm going to put a motor in here. I'm going to put some electronics in here, and we're going to get this boat on the lake. And we're going to be kicking up some six-foot rooster tails. All right, you guys stay tuned, and let's get right into it. First, as you see, uh, I used some Tupperware. I used a little bit of Tupperware in here because Tupperware has an airtight seal. So I put these compartments in here to place the batteries in here, to place the... Uh, uh, radio components, the servos, receivers, and all that kind of stuff off and on switch so that these things uh, don't get wet even if the boat sinks. Uh, unfortunately, boats do sink and especially radio control boats, but I have never sunk one and I'm hoping that I will not sink this one. So, one of the first things I'm going to do is I'm going to seal up the compartment here. Uh, it's been a while since I uh, sailed this boat and so now I need to put some more foam sealer along this path right here. That's where we're going. That's where this portion of the boat, the top plate, 
connects to the chassis of the boat. And I want to just secure it a little bit better than just the two pieces of wood being there together. So I'm going to use some foam adhesive and I'm just going to take the adhesive uh, off the back of here like so and I'm going to apply it. I'm going to do this side first so that I can I don't, I don't have talking because this is very very thin right here and I want to make sure that I get it evenly dispersed and distributed throughout the entire beam so that that water does not go inside of there pretty much like that there and once I have it on, I'm going to run my finger along it just to make sure that it has a good seal to it. Just like that. There you go. I think that's good enough right there. Okay. As you can see, I still have the foam that remained from the first application right up there. That foam is kind of... Uh, dry rot it. I might just go ahead and replace it. Would be wise. But as long as it's there, it's, it's closing any gaps. So, we've got that piece there. And next we've got this piece to go on the other side. So, we'll move that that way. Turn the boat around, it's as simple as that, and remove the tape once again, like this, all the way down, and remembering I want to get a really, really good seal and an even distribution because this rail is so thin. But if I take my time, I'm going to be alright with getting it done. But this goes a long way. Even though when I built the boat, it was pretty much uh, well measured. Everything was well measured. And so... It was sanded and all the wood pieces and things like that were cut and they were fitted really, really as precise as I could humanly possibly get it. So it really wasn't that difficult. Now, so that little gap there is is a is going to go a tremendous way. That's a beautiful set right there. Now that's what I wanted right there. What I'll do now is I'll take the bow and I'll reapply the top. See what is going on. It's kind of snugged, but there, uh -huh, I can feel it going in. You can feel it actually pushing down. Uh-huh, pushing down. Yeah, mm-hmm. See? And now, as it goes down, finally in the rear, it kind of squishes the foam insulation out. And that's what you want. Because that's real good snug fit. That's the kind of fit that you want. And over time it's going to get the uh, foam is going to compress more and more as you go through this process here. Okay. As you 
continue to apply it and remove it, apply it and remove it. Now, that's what you want. And I'll let you guys take a real good close up of that. As you can see, there it is right there. All the way around. Now you have like a, a dark color runner along the side of the boat. But that's what's preventing water from going in and that's going to help you a long way. And I push it up even further like that and voila! That's my key word. So, we got that done. Alright, so, we've done that. We've secured that. That's one of the first things I want to do. Next, I'm going to remove top plate again and it's time to go to work all right so top plate comes out bam there you go now that's going to wear a little bit and it might even tear a little bit but that's okay you don't have to worry about that that won't hurt anything this is just a you know a security blanket okay so now we've got that done and I'm happy with that. So I'm going to move this aside because my next thing that I like to do when assembling a radio control uh, boat application is get everything tested. I'm going to get my electronics on the table and I'm going to begin to uh, run a dry run application to see if things are operating or whether I've got to replace some servos. These servos have been in this boat since 1991. I could have put something in it new, but if it ain't broke, don't fix it. But that's the way I go. So next thing you know, I'm coming up with a servo. Here's a servo, here's a battery pack that will go inside, here's another servo, because you're going to need one servo to steer the boat, the rudder, that's where you get your left and right, and then you're going to need another servo to control the throttle on the motor. So let's, let's go through that process of testing the equipment should be really simple if everything is in order we should be able to get this done this will be my rudder servo with the two clevises clevises are what attach to the servo horn which then attach to the rear of the motor and it connects to the motor rotor guides. So we're going to show you that once I test this equipment. Okay, that's that. Uh, we're in need of a off and on switch. And if we see, here's the off and on switch here so we'll attach this to here like so and then we'll attach that to the battery like so now we've got the two servos here we've got the receiver right here you got your receiver and you got your servo. Now, let me turn my radio on and see if we get anything. Okay, we got a little something. Okay, we first must have to bind the radio. Uh, let's see, with the battery. Okay, that's one of the things I 
neglected to do, which was bond the uh, radio and the you see if that did it time. Okay, now that looks like okay. Okay, we got it. We got it. All right. Beautiful. All right, so that's done. As long as we know that's working, we're good. Okay, so we got contact. We got a system here, and the system is working. Lovely, lovely, lovely. All right, now we're moving forward. First thing we want to get now is our motor. Here's the number one driving force of the boat. So here's our motor. We're going to have to put a few things on this motor in order to operate this motor. And the first thing I'm going to start with is this system here. Well, I'm going to put these items on. That way, you guys will know exactly what's going on. Okay. This is an adjustable rear motor mount. This is the motor mount that we have here now. It's just a simple plate with four holes on it and a swivel left and right. The problem with that motor mount is once you drive the four bolts in, that's it. If you don't have the proper uh, water level for the prop to go through the water, then you don't have any adjustment on this. You have to drill holes, four more holes, up and up and up. And really what you have in the back of the boat here is a whole bunch of holes. So you don't want to do that. That's why you get a aftermarket mount like this. And as you can see in here, this mount has slots on it as opposed to four holes. And wherever you put the screws, you can move it up or down. Not only can you move it up or down like that, you can also move it and tilt it forward and backwards. Because sometimes the boat might be hitting in some choppy water. And if it's hitting in choppy water, if you have the motor pitched like this, when that wave comes, it's going to ride over the front of the boat and cause the boat to nosedive. That's because the wave is pushing the boat up and the motor is trying to push the boat down. So what you want to do is you want to have some flexibility and adjustment of this motor so you can rock it forth and aft, forward and backwards, so that if there's too many waves or high waves coming and you still want to sail this boat, what you would do is you would pitch the prop down. The force of the energy forcing down on this angle will cause the back of the boat to go down and the front of the boat to rise. So if it's this way, waves are coming, they're going over the top of the boat. You don't want the waves to go over the top of the boat no more. Pitch the motor down. Now the boat pitches up in the front. And it hits the waves somewhere beneath the nose of the boat. And you've got more control. And so that's why you need an adjustable mount. So let's go ahead and change that mount out. Because that's one of the first things we want to do. If we've got that ability to do that, you want to make certain that you just go right ahead and get that motor, get that out of there, get that done, get it taken care of. So we'll go ahead and we'll move these four screws. Well, actually, it's five of them here, like this.
take these out and uh, once I get these out one two three four and the fifth one here right here okay now we got those four out we're going to need to pry open the casing so I might as well get a screwdriver ready to do that. All right, and we're going to have to break the bolts on the side here, like that, to loosen up that case. So we got those bolts there, and these here, like so. Now, we're in the market to crack the case open. Let's get the case out. Right, first thing, okay, it's just a nice little pry. You don't have to go crazy with this. Just enough to get it up. Okay, now, once you get that up, you don't have to disassemble the whole thing, just enough to get the pin up. And once the pin comes up, it comes out. There you go. So, we got that there. Now, that pin is out, that mount is out. Slide this pin in here. This is different. As you can see, this is different. Not only do you get a, a better swivel on a control here, but you also get more space back from the transom of the boat. And that's where the motor mounts onto the transom. So now we're going to try to ease this pin in between here without creating a total disassembly of the boat motor. Because we don't want to have to go through all that. Hey! That's what you want right there, baby. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's like Ben and Jerry's ice cream. It's sweet. All day long. That's what you want. So now we're moving right along there you go with that we're going down baby you're going down to the river down down baby down to the riverside that's where you're going this boat's going to sail this boat's going to kick some tail this boat's going to kick some rooster tail y'all uh-huh. And, and, and you see how if you pay attention to what you're doing, you got the right tools, you can do this too. For all you guys who never did a boat before, now look at that. Look at that. Look at that. See, that's, that's better than that, baby. That's better than that. That right there beat that all day long with a baseball bat. Ha! I like that. All right. Now... That we have that done, we have the next thing is we want to get this thing marked up. All right, so we get this thing marked up, and we're gonna mark our transom on the back. Get everything going right the way we want it. Make some magic marker marks. Let me get my permanent marker out. Voila. It's always available. I like it like that. Alright, so measure my size. We got the left side. Bam! And the right side. I put marks on here that say left and right, baby. Left and right. You can't go wrong with the left and the right. Alright, girl. Left and right, -o. That's what we do right there with that. So, we know what we got going. 
and we're coming from this side here, left side in, connects to the right side in, like that, and we got them connecting there, and since we got them connecting, let's throw the washer on it real quick, like that. This is the uh, this is the quick application to let you guys see. It's not that difficult, you know. It's not that difficult. In fact, I've never done this before, and I'm breathing right through it without instructions. Self-explanatory. I mean, if you've been doing radio radio controlled cars. For as many years as I have, there's nothing to it when you switch over to boats, airplanes, submarines. There's nothing to it. So now we have our uh, screws in there. I want to just snug them up nice and not real tight, but just have them snugged up. There you go. Just like that. Okay. So, we got that there, just like that. All right, now, there's your new mount. From this itty-bitty baby mount to the big daddy that's capable of holding it down when you need that power and this ability, man. So, and what I was telling you guys about the ability to make some adjustments. This is an adjustable mount as opposed to a fixed motor transom mount. I loosen that up a little bit and, and you see this can move this way. You see it slanting? Okay, so that means it's riding on the water like that. And if I pull the bottom out, make some adjustments like that, now you see that slant that's like that? That slant means it's riding in the water like that. So, now I'll just make it flat on both sides like this. And that's good enough for me. Right there, my friend, right there. So now I'm going to take this, put these bolts back in to secure it up. Like that. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. That's all good. It's good news. It's good money. That's what we call good money right there. Uh-huh. Good money. That's good money right there, baby. That's good money. Okay. Now we've got our boat back together. I'm going to move these things off the table here temporarily, baby. I'm coming back to this stuff, though. I don't like leaving y'all for long. So, now, we're going to slide this baby bubble back over here. And just like this, just like that, we're going to take this marker, put the boat on here like this. Make a dot there. Make a dot there. Make a dot there. And make a dot there. Just like that. Go over one more time. Mm-hmm. Yeah, baby boy. That's what you do when you want to do what to do when you got to do it. Just do it. Like Nike said. Now, I'm going to reach over to my power drill, pull out my drill bits, see which one I need, secure it in the drill like this baby.